Well guys, the holidays are finally upon us and Zillow just decided to just quit the home flipping business. So what does this mean for the next couple of months and what should we expect in the future? Stay tuned as I go over all of last month's numbers and prepare you for the next round of this crazy housing market. So as the market begins to cool, like it always does this time of year, we just got a crazy story about Zillow quitting the home flipping game. Now, is this a red flag or simply just a poor business model? Once we go over all these analytics, I think you'll have a better idea of what Zillow may be up to. Now, if you don't care about Las Vegas specific real estate, just go ahead and skip ahead. I'll make sure to add a chapter marker for you. Okay. First up is housing absorption. We look at this to determine how different price segments are performing. Now, the higher the number, the higher the demand. First up are homes priced under $250,000. This dropped slightly from 80% last month to 79%. Next is 250 to 500,000. This is by far our biggest segment. This remains steady at 62%. Next, we move to 500 to 750. Now this actually increased from 43% up to 46%. Next, we move to 750 to 1 mil. This decreased 3% down to 41%. Next, we move on to the ultra luxury segment of homes priced between 1 million to 1.5. I should say luxury. This had a surprising 5% increase to 37%. Now, last but not least is what I was trying to say, the ultra luxury market of over 1.5 million. This too increased marginally from 25% to 28%. So while the low end of the market remained pretty steady, the high end of the market actually saw a bit more demand than expected this time of year. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at last month's sales. Last month, we sold 2,926 homes. For the first time this entire year, we sold less homes than we sold the previous year. This translated to a 1.3% reduction in sales. Again, every single month this entire year, we've sold more than we sold in 2020. Next, let's see what result this had on median home prices. As you can see now, we ended last month with an identical median price of $410,000. Looking closer at this graph, you can see that prices have been relatively flat over the past four months. Now, this is more what we need to focus on. But first, and last but not least, let's check out the current inventory levels. On the screen now, you can see we ended October with 3,375 homes. This was just over a 3% reduction in inventory from the previous month. Now, looking back over the past decade, it's quite normal for inventory to start slipping during the final quarter of the year. However, with only a five week supply of inventory, it's increasingly difficult to bring that number down too much more from here. The homes that are priced right are still selling and selling quite quickly. But the majority of homes sitting on the market are simply mm, overpriced and or in poor condition for the price. So let's wrap up and chat about Zillow real quick. As we just covered, the market is basically steady overall. Inventory is low, sales are stagnant, and pricing seems to have leveled off. Now, on one hand, this seems completely normal to me. So much of our market had to do with migration patterns. So many people from California moved here in the early part of the year because they were afraid of the escalating prices. As a result, spring became the new summer season. But once the summer was over and school started, it seemed like the market really slowed down. As a result, this is starting to feel somewhat, you know, normal again. However, with only a five week supply of inventory, there's a ton of buyers out there that still simply cannot find what they're looking for. And with prices stagnant, buyers no longer feel rushed. Normally, November and December are deal season for me, since so many buyers just take the holidays off altogether. It's typically a great time to purchase properties from motivated and some stressed out sellers. 
So far, however, not many sellers are really worried, which brings us to Zillow. I don't even know where to begin. I, I literally have had multiple Zillow videos in the can for years now, from illustrating how their atrocious Zillow estimates really are, to more recently breaking down their flipping business. First off, ask any real estate professional how accurate Zillow is, and you're likely to hear a laugh before the actual answer. This is because Zillow is terrible at estimates. I mean, how can an algorithm know if your home was remodeled, if it backs up to a busy street or a shopping center, or if people just simply hate your particular floor plan? As a result, you can even check your own city on Zillow's website, and they disclose what they think their accuracy is. But check out the first city, which is Atlanta. They claim that 67.9% of the time, they're within 10% of the sales price. In Cleveland, they're only 53%. So think about it. In these two cities, one third to one half of the time, they're not even within 10%. Can you imagine me as a realtor walking into your home and saying, well, I kind of think your house is worth between uh, $450,000 and maybe $550,000, like 100 grand? I'm, I'm kinda sure it's worth about that. Who on earth would use that realtor who's that clueless? Not to mention being wrong half of the time with an absurd range just like that. So as we've all known for a while now, Zillow is a joke. It's a cute consumer tool that makes money charging us as realtors to advertise. Now I'm not hating, it's obviously a profitable business. But imagine if you sucked that bad at determining value and then decided to put your money where your mouth is. I've flipped over 100 homes. I've never been off by maybe 2 to 3% of the final sales price. I mean, think about it. If you don't know the value of a property, how do you know how much to pay for it to begin with? As they say in the flipping business, the money is made in the purchase. If you buy right, you sell right. Over the past few years, it seemed to me that Zillow was way overpaying for these properties. In the past, I've seen them sell properties at or below what they even paid for them. So a couple months ago, I had my assistant pull every single sale in Las Vegas to try and determine their margin. To my surprise, they were actually grossing around 8% for that month. Honestly, it was way better than I thought. Other people came out with videos about Zillow, so I just went ahead and shelved mine. But now look at this market. Sure, if you purchased a property, say in April, by the time you got around to flipping it, you've already seen 10 plus percent appreciation in value. This was an absurd year for appreciation. So if you're making 8% profit, flipping in a market that's going up three to 4% monthly, at some point you have to ask yourself, what happens when the market goes flat? Essentially, this is exactly what Zillow did. They realized that their business model flat out sucked. They were paying too much for homes, and now that the market is starting to stabilize, their margins are just way too thin to survive. What they just now realized is what all of us have known forever. It was simply a poor business model. Now, couple that with increasing costs, payroll, and a job market full of people who don't want to work, and you've got a disaster waiting to happen if you're a flipper. So was Zillow backing out of the flipping business a canary in the coal mine? I don't think so. I think that Zillow realized their business model could only succeed in a hyper-appreciating market. Now, it's that, or simply start insulting people with lowball offers like normal flippers do but that would drastically hurt their image and jeopardize their main income stream. Now the real question is, who's next? If the market continues to cool off like it has next year, all of these eye buyers will have to reconsider their business model and or potentially get killed out there. My guess is that most, if not all, will be gone by the end of next year, unless we see another year of massive appreciation. Quite frankly, I don't think we can afford another year of 20% appreciation. Well, that's it for this month, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button for me. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I'll see you all next month.